Okay, let us briefly revisit Augustine on the different kinds of goods, and let us say something about this new class of goods we haven't yet discussed, the intermediate goods, and why Augustine takes humans to fall in that class. So remember, there are two main kinds of goods we've discussed uh, throughout the semester so far. On the one way hand, we have the lower goods, which are physical objects or things that depend on the physical objects of the physical world. Remember, physical health, physical beauty, money, that kind of stuff. And then the higher goods, we've got the tried and true, virtue, truth, and God. And the distinctions between the two that have come up so far, and I may add one or two new distinctions that Augustine makes between the higher goods and the lower goods. So remember, he takes the lower goods to be worldly or profane. They're corporeal, bodily, or physical. That's to say they're extending the three spatial dimensions. They're impermanent. They can perish. They're constantly changing. A new one here is that they're perceived or enjoyed by the body. How do you experience bodily pleasure except through the body? What, what do you use the wealth of this world for except through the body and the physical world. Remember, they can be lost or taken against your will, and you can't have them simply by willing. With respect to the higher goods, they're divine, they're spiritual, incorporeal, sometimes you might say non-physical or non-spatially extended. They're eternal, unchanging, actually they're unchangeable, and these are perceived by the mind or reason. You don't see virtue, truth, God through the eyes of the body. These are things that you know by the mind. Take, for example, a mathematical truth, such as two plus two equals four. Show me in the where in the world you can see that. Right? You go turn under some rock and it's there, something like that. You may say, well, right here. Right? You say, I see it right here. Here's the truth. That's not the truth. That's a representation of the truth. And the reason we know that this is not the truth is that this is perishable. But the fact that 2 plus 2 equals 4 is not perishable. Right? So mathematical truths, moral truths, truth itself, you're contemplating truth itself. These are uh, virtue, God. These are things that you know by the mind and not by the bodily senses. You can't lose these or these can't be taken from you, but you can have them simply by willing. Okay, so the intermediate goods. Augustine includes humans in here. The reason why goes back to Augustine holding a dualistic view of human beings. Remember, like Plato, Augustine takes human beings to be composed of two basic kinds of substance, bodily substance and soul. And the reason human beings are intermediate goods is because one of their parts has some of the features of the higher goods and another of their parts has features of the lower goods. So the body has the features of the lower goods. It's corporeal or physical. It's impermanent. It's constantly changing. You know, you see that you have a body, right? You experience your body. You perceive it that you have a body through your bodily senses. Can be taken or lost. You get an arm lopped off, get crushed by a car, what have you. You can't have a body simply by willing it. Or your arm gets lopped off or something. You can't change that through your mind alone in the acts of your mind. Right. Whereas the soul doesn't have all these features, but it certainly has some of them. So, for example, Augustine takes the soul to be spiritual or incorporeal. It's a non-extended object. It, it has no length, width, or height. Um, that you have a soul is not perceived by the senses of your body, but... It's by the mind reflecting on itself, thinking it has this uh, ability to, to perceive and think. And 
it kind of sees itself with the eye of the mind. We'll see that later in, in the upcoming discussions about Augustine. This is in a certain sense a prelude to that. There's a question as, so Augustine thinks that your soul is, can survive the death of the body. So and there is a, God of course could take your soul from you, right? He could blink you out of existence, but he wouldn't think that a, another human being could destroy your soul. Just by destroying your body doesn't destroy your soul. Augustine takes the soul to survive the death of the body. Uh, maybe it's not so clear what to say about the soul in relation to this quality of um, you can have it simply by willing. So the point here is that Augustine takes human beings to be intermediate goods because they're composed of two main parts or substances, body and soul, and each of those parts shares at least some features of the higher goods or lower goods, hence making human beings kind of in between the lower goods and the higher goods. And so to tie this back in, remember with the eternal law, all things should be properly ordered. Proper ordering is when the higher thing rules the lower thing or the, the lower subjects itself to the higher. Human beings, given that they're higher than the lower goods, at least in part, in part of the soul, they should rule these things and not be ruled by them. And given that they're lower than these, they should be subjected to these and ruled by these. And given that uh, the soul is higher than the body, the soul should rule the body. So in this, in this video, we talked about Augustine's taxonomy of goods, and we added to that his category of intermediate goods in which he places human beings. In the next upcoming videos, what we're going to discuss is Augustine's taxonomy of the senses. So he takes there to be bodily senses, but he also takes there to be a sense of the mind, namely an eye of the mind, right? And we're going to look at his arguments that there is what he sometimes calls or is referred to as intellectual perception, a kind of seeing by the mind or an eye of the mind. And eventually we're going to look at his argument for God from truth. I'll see you in the next video.